audiophiles often prefer large, three-way floor-standing speakers with bass reflex port that enhance bass output. This setup has become the industry standard. However, there are various alternatives to consider. The Diora Acoustics Course 5 moves away from the traditional designs with its innovative approach to the cabinet type, driver material and technology. Please leave a like and let's get to it! Those speakers are rather on the smaller side for floor standing. They aren't particularly tall, deep or wide, so positioning them in a room is going to be made significantly easier. The design choices made by Diora Acoustics contribute to a very clean and simple look. My unit has a beautiful gloss finish, but there are other options available as well. You can even purchase additional front plates in different colors to change things up a little. The drivers are always white, for a specific reason I will explain shortly. Technically they have exposed screws, but they are color matched the black ring surrounding them, so it doesn't look like any worse because of that. The included fabric grills are super heavy and premium. They are black, magnetically attached and have an angled bottom edge. You also get a speaker base. It seems like it's made out of a different material, perhaps wood, but it's not super heavy. It truly helps with the stability and allows you to screw in the spikes, which are the real deal. Super well built, beautiful and sharp like a knife. You get a single pair of decent quality binding posts, which limits by amping or by wiring options. These posts accept bare wire, spade connectors and banana plugs, covering all of your needs. If you have watched this video so far, please consider subscribing to my channel. This speaker is a two-way, passive floor stander. Yes, two-way, which means that the tweeter is separate, dedicated to high frequencies, while two woofers work together on reproducing the mid-range and bass. That is a unique approach, as a three-driver speaker would usually have a dedicated mid-range and a dedicated bass unit. However, such configuration allows for a better bass extension. The middle driver is not wasting its capabilities by being limited in its frequency band on the low end. The tweeter itself is a dome construction with ceramic coating and a 22.5mm voice coil. It has a type of face plug in the middle to help to diffuse the sound in all directions, instead of beaming from just the very middle. The low frequency transducers are 170mm, around 6.7 inches. They have larger 35.5mm voice coils. They also have ceramic coating with a very very nice texture. The drivers seem to be of superb quality and all of them are made of the same material, ceramic. So all frequency bands should have a similar timber. The Course 5 has nominal impedance of 4 ohms, but it doesn't dip below 3.7 ohms. That, paired with a sensitivity of 90 dB, makes it possible to drive with lots of electronics. It's not the easiest to drive, like some horn-loaded designs, so you probably won't get away with the least powerful, tiny tube amps, but it's even further away from the most difficult to drive. I found that it pairs well with clean, fully transistor amplifiers, but you can feel free to experiment. Let me know in the comments if you prefer solid state or tube amplification. The speaker can handle up to 120 watts of power, which is a significant number considering its size. It probably won't fill a huge hole, but you also won't complain about the volume levels you're able to achieve in actual, real-world scenarios. The frequency extension goes from 44Hz up to 22kHz at minus 3 dB. This might not sound like anything special, but it has just two woofers that are doing the mid-range at the same time. Plus, what's even more surprising, it's a closed or sealed box design. Once you take those two aspects, it becomes much more serious. The bass rolls off much slower when it's non-vented. So at, let's say, 35Hz, you are still getting some usable output. If you placed Course 5 in a room with 20 other loudspeakers, and listened blindly to each one, it would likely stand out the most. Its sound is so distinct and unique that I'm not sure if I ever heard anything similar to this. Starting with the bass, 
It's just different, and I'm so glad it is the way it is. Despite having just two medium-sized woofers, it doesn't sound like it's limited or constrained. The sealed box construction makes every note from bass to mid-range super dynamic, fast and hard-hitting. It sounds like it extends much deeper than what the specs say, yet it's never bloated. It's quite far from that actually. Some could even call them bass light in some cases. But I think it is very balanced. It sounded amazing with modern music filled with low frequency energy. I usually don't listen to such tracks, but these speakers made me occasionally pick a few electronic or pop songs. The mid-range seems to be slightly scooped out, not very forward, in your face or shouty. The vocals take a step or two back in the mix, giving instruments the upper hand. Since it's being reproduced by the same transducers as bass, it shares very similar characteristics. It is also very dynamic, snappy and bouncy. The treble is another standout feature of this speaker. Tonally it is slightly brought up, but it is very, very smooth. Almost to the point of feeling slightly rolled off, although it is definitely not. I would attribute that mostly to the ceramic coating, but I'm no engineer, so I can't guarantee that no other factor contributes to that. I found that it sounds best at medium-high volumes, slightly above my regular listening levels, around 3 or 4 decibels higher, but not excessively loud. That's when the soundstage expanded dramatically, and the dynamic range truly excelled. This speaker is one of the most dynamic in its class, without a doubt. The detail retrieval is at a good level. It doesn't project the nuances at you with a lot of force though. Instead, it makes most of them available to you, but you have to look for them. It makes for quite a pleasant experience in my opinion. Older and less well-made recordings sound quite good with this speaker. It extracts a good amount of detail while smoothing over issues like pops, crackles or reverberations. Whether you prefer a speaker that is true to the original recording or one that enhances your listening experience is personal. This speaker is clearly designed for enjoyment. The soundstage size is not the widest, but it is very believable. It does a good job of sounding real in the spatial cues, diffusing the individual sound sources just a little bit. Overall, the Course 5 is a very fun speaker with a fairly balanced yet slightly V-shaped tonality. It can surprise you with the dynamic range, going from soft and delicate to super punchy notes. It can do a good job with both modern and very old recordings because of its technical characteristics and tuning.